no, Freddy, no, no, Freddy, no. Merely a day after plunging into the freezing waters of the Bering Sea, deckhand Freddy narrowly avoids being trapped under a 2,500 pounds launcher while repairing a broken pipe. What is that? Unidentified floating object. Something big out there. It's like a dead killer whale. What the f is that? Oh, it's a tree! Don't worry about me, I'm just a tree floating here. With surveillance on it. Jonathan instructs the crew to use lassos to secure the renegade tree and then hoist it onto the deck using the crane. No, Freddy, no, no, Freddy, no! Woo! No, Freddy! Oh! Man, no, Freddy. This is not good. Hang on to that, Freddy, so we don't lose you. Yeah, baby! Come on, come on, come on! Come here! This is Never done something no in my life. Thank you, Freddy, but that vlog, we're going out, getting out of here. Out of nowhere, just come out there. Now diving for Team Time Bandit. Well, that could have gone a hundred ways wrong. I didn't mean to try to disrespect the captain. No, no. Or anybody, you know? I see a little bit of crab color in that pond. Thank you, God. Not bad. We can live with it. I can set this gear off the deck and get it on get it on these crabs. Yeah. Yeah, baby. There we go. Oh my god. That helps our little cars. See your 450. Yeah. I just gotta just keep going slow and be happy that I'm getting this gear aboard. God always gives us just as what we need over here. Never too much. Keeps us humble. 290. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's set that one back. We're going to power punch this. There she goes. Uh-oh. I might have a problem. You got a leak. Wow! Freddy just almost got crushed. You okay? That was way too close. Oh wow! In a brief lapse of judgment, veteran deckhand Freddy Morgatai disconnects the hydraulic line, inadvertently releasing pressure and causing the 2,500-pound launcher to collapse. You need to go wash your eyes. Go wash off. Wash that off. Hyd hydraulic hit him right in the face. If he wouldn't have been that quick. He would have just got smashed by the launcher. You gotta be more careful when it comes. To like that. The Lord wants me to live because I got the babies, the wife and the babies to feed. All right, just gotta get through this. Yeah, baby, that's a fun there. Yeah, baby, We should take a crew photo. Coming up. Oh my god. Well, we got about 12 hours to haul gear, then before the weather comes up. We're in the money. That was just an insane amount of crap. Getting so close to having this pig full. Rock and roll. Freddy's <laughs> getting happy. Freddy, come here. I hope I'm doing something right, brother. That's so, us. Come on, get us here, man. No. That's the only reason I came out here. Are you serious? That's serious. Yeah, that's yours, man. Thank you, Gary. Love you, man. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. That silver won't stop bullets like Freddy. He shot a hole right through that thing, but I wouldn't try to shoot Freddy because he's bulletproof. I just feel emotional right now. I feel like go cry. Yeah. We did it, dude. We're done. I'll take those crab to town. God. Captain Jonathan embarks on a perilous journey into a severe storm, aiming to discover unexplored territory. His crew faces life-threatening challenges, contending with 35-foot waves as they venture into uncharted waters, all in pursuit of the ultimate crab catch. We're gonna get that slipping <laughs> beat out of us. But we have a good boat, we have a good crew. <sighs> ay, ay, ay. That's a 30-foot wave that just rolled by. Watching my boys. These guys are definitely in harm's way. There's another big right there. Can't freak out. 
and I can't panic and do something dumb and get somebody hurt right now. That's a 30 foot wave, dude. Hey, Wyatt, hang on, Wyatt. This is a big one. Here comes a big one. Oh. Hang on. They like to travel in pairs. Be careful, be careful. Big one. Oh. You okay? Yeah, Roger. Well, that was close. Just go one pot at a time. Having an amazing time. If anybody was behind the launcher when that one hit, it would have really hurt somebody. Gotta go try to find some better crab. Looking to boost his average and fish away from the fleet. Captain Jonathan stacks on his remaining pots. We're gonna haul these through the night and then we're on our way north. Try to make it up there without having to stop at the ice. Do I like fishing off to the side all along? It's uh, dangerous to go up to Russia. So scary. It's always scary. Blowing pretty good out there. Look at that. You guys are taking a pounding on deck. I really got to watch out. Hang on. I might be able to get two more pops. We'll see how this one goes. I can't see nobody on deck. I hear a lot of yelling. And that's not good. OK, we got one left, guys. This is the last one. Hold them stack that. They can put that pot away and come in and not get hurt. That's all I'm gonna ask of them. We worked hard, we battled the storm, and we got these 90 on board. Those other 10 pots will be right here, soaking in the water for us. I just got above the fleet. All the lights are behind us. I haven't seen any gear for a while. It's scary and dangerous out there. After throwing caution into the 45 knot winds and steaming north, Captain Jonathan Hillstrand gets ready to deploy a prospective string of fishing gear in the northern farming area, aiming to locate a biomass of fish that he can claim as his own. Okay guys, tell me are you ready? Let's go ahead and dump the first one. We'll have a 24 hour soak on our big 90 pot string we got up here. And then we can start pulling gear, find out what we got. We have a chance to beat the storm. We were down here. Our gear is all up here now, so hopefully we're in some crap. It's just difficult, just a miserable day. See how it worked. Beautiful. Never seen so many crap. Not a good sight to be on here. Four, zero, zero. Four hundreds are gonna get us home. I love my boat. Love my guys. We are gonna pick a dump and get them all back in the water with bait in them, three copper pods. Good things are happening to the time bat right now. After navigating through a brutal storm, Captain Sieg Hansen ups to drop anchor to prevent colliding with a perilous rock formation. However, the anchor snaps off completely, plunging the crew into a state of panic. I chose not to fish out there in 24-foot seas. It's so late in the game, I just don't want anybody to get hurt. And I'm beating the boat up. You've got all the whitewater breakers coming up on that jetty. So you got to surf your way in and then turn 90 degrees to get into that place. If Sieg's timing is even slightly off and a wave catches the broadside, the Northwestern and her crew could be violently slammed into the treacherous jetty. That risk is not worth it. The younger Sieg wouldn't think twice, but too old for that <sighs> Once again, Mother Nature is in control, not me. You can't beat the weather. We can anchor on the other side of the island. I don't want to die out here. Rather than contending with the turbulent waves to enter the harbor, Captain Sieg chooses to drop anchor and patiently wait for karma seas. When we anchor up, it's tough because you've got swell coming one way and wind going the other. So even though your boat's being held back by the wind, you still got that swell rocking and rolling. take probably half a day for this to mellow out, if not more. 
Got to keep an eye on things here. I think it'll be all right. She's holding, but we do have this swell coming in. Oh. It's busted. It's lost it. Cable snapped. This sucks. You got the wind holding us back, and then a big swell came in. It was just enough to part the cable. That was big. All the air is pow. So now our anchor is on the bottom. I'm trying to see if I can get that thing back. Come up for a sec. Let's get a game plan here. The cable snapped between the boats, and the two boys indicated the location of the severed anchor cable. I think if you can uh, get a lasso around those surge bags, if I bring it up to the side of those surge bags, and then you just loop it. Just put a nylon, loop, boom. Then you can take that nylon, and you run it, run it around. And you pull them both up. They're both going to wind up. Huh? I mean, do you think that's doable? Let's try it. Nice, big, big lasso. Come on, Carl, do it. Hey! Here we go. Go, go, go. Watch out. Caught up the flag off a little. Oh, we got it! Nicely done. Now, it's up to Seed to skillfully maneuver the boat in order to hoist up the 5,000 pounds of steel. OK, go easy. I need to just keep slack. My job is to stay ahead of it so that we lift the cable straight up if I can. That line is solely there to lift up that cable. Try to overlap it so you get a bite. Okay, coming off that drum. Oh yeah, we got it. That's ours. We own it. We we'll get our anchor back. Hey, <laughs> I'm afraid to ask what's next. In this episode from Season 8, an Arctic hurricane hits Cape Caution. We just got into a hell of a squall here. I don't have the horsepower. I don't have the, the rail height. We have the worst weather we've seen this entire season. I'm trying to set for a southwest wind that's about 40 knots. Always trying to think ahead. I'm trying to set them so when we pick them later with the wind, not in the weather. Battling through the relentless storm, Captain Wild Bill Vukrowski prepares to line up his next stream. Get the bag over the side. Throw him with a set of Oh, you're clear of the police setups back there. Is it? Yeah, it's still yeah. We're good. Uh, all right, let's, uh... Yeah, go ahead, continue. down one of our engines, we are screwed. A long way from home, and we're talking 50 knot winds, and I can't maintain steering with one engine on this boat. Is it on the wheel or is it on this line? No, it's down there. So they're both going down? Yeah. When we said it was clear, we weren't clear. Oh, I'm pretty sure it was clear. I don't know. Nick said we were clear, we weren't clear, so we caught a set of second one, so a second one wrapped up on the first one. Launching a string in the midst of a storm, the boats inadvertently ran over a buoy setup, causing a propeller to snag a pot. Subsequently, when the second pot was launched, it became entangled with the first one. Now dragging 2,000 pound anchors and 300 yards of line, the captain and crew find themselves in a challenging situation. If this stuff comes loose and all of a sudden there's a, a big, couple big loops and it gets wrapped up in the wheel, we 
could be right in the middle of a 40, 50 knot blow. We got pots stuck in our wheel. It's really, really bad. As long as I put it in forward and go, that will just hang. But if I have to maneuver and you put it in reverse and it wraps around the shaft, it can it can just bind us up and just shut us down. I'm not going to go anywhere. Hey, you're secure back here. All right, you know what? The forecast is nothing but 40s and 50s for the next five days. I'm, I can't risk this. I'm really fortunate right now that we even have power to the starboard engine. We're going to uh, take what we have and go to town. I've never had to come in for lying in a wheel, but first for everything, you know? <clears throat> Divers are done. Line is out. You're ready to rock and roll. Let's go. Let's throw the lines. Let's get out of here and get this over with. We don't have much to catch. Okay. I'll go far away.